Okay, so our project is up and running. In this video, I want to talk about the admin area. So if we come back over here to our local host, colon 8000, and type in forward slash admin, this goes to the Django administration area. And the admin area is a way to sort of do database stuff on the back end. It's a nice little uh, graphical user interface that lets you do database administration stuff. But you notice it's asking for a username and a password, and we don't have a username and a password, so we need to create that. So head back over to our terminal, and you'll notice you can see our, ter our server is running. So every time we go to the website, it, it does a little something here. So in order for our Django project to work in the web browser, this server has to always be running, right? But now we can't type in any other commands. So there's a couple of things you could do. You can hit Control and C, to break out of the server, but if you do that, the server is no longer running. So if you come back here and hit reload, you'll get an error in a second here. Boom, right there, because the server's not running anymore. So you always want this server to be running. So I'm going to press up on my keyboard to type in python manage.py run server. So, okay, the server's running, running again. And come back here and hit reload. Oops. And okay, now it seems to be working. But like I said, we can't. We can't type in commands. So, of course, you can hit control C every time to break out of the server, type your command, and then run the server again. But that's kind of a hassle. I always just like to open another version of Git Bash, right? So I just went to my Windows Start menu, typed in Git Bash, and clicked it and started up a new version. So now we've got this one and we've got this one. They're both running. This one has the server in it. We'll just keep it up always and kind of ignore it. And this one we'll use uh, to type in our command. So we need to change directory into our C Django weather directory, right? And then we need to turn on our, our virtual environment. So that was source uh, vim scripts activate. Okay, so boom, that's now activated. So now we need to change into our weather directory. And we're in our weather directory and we can See, this is the correct place because we see there's our manage.py file when we type in ls. So, okay, we're back where we need to go. So, now what we need to do is set up our administrative user and migrate the database. So, Django comes with some database stuff pre-installed and ready to go. Stuff that takes care of all of your administrative database things, like your username. But... With Django and with most things, database stuff is always a two-step process. You make a database migration, step one, and then you push that migration into the database. Well, we only have to do one of those steps this time because, like I said, Django already came with the migration ready to go. We just need to push it into the database. And to do that, it's pretty simple. We just type in Python manage.py. It's always Python manage.py when we want to issue Django commands. And then the command we want is just migrate. We're pushing the migration into the database. And you can see it did a bunch of stuff, and we're good to go. So now we need to create a, a super user, an administrative user, so that we can log into that form that we just looked at. And to do that, usually it's python manage.py, and then create super user, all one word. And if you're on a Mac or Linux, that's the command you'll use. But us, in git bash, if we do that, we get this little error. So this is one of the only times you actually have to modify the command a little bit. So it's actually win pty and then python manage.py create super user. Okay, so now it's asking what username you want. I'm just going to call myself admin. And I don't think you really need to put your email address, but we'll go ahead and do that. Now pick a password, and as I type it, you notice it's not being typed on the screen. That's normal. That's a security feature. So it's asking for the password again. I'll type it again, and boom, our super user has been created successfully. So now we can come back over here, type in our username and the password we just picked, and boom, we can log into the Django administrative area. And it's very cool. So if we click on here, users, we see our user that we just created. Here's our uh, email address that we just typed in. We can do all kinds of stuff. We can add users from here. If you have other administrators that are going to manage your website for you and you want to add them, you can click on each thing and update your first name, last name, uh, change the username. You could change the password somewhere around here. You can delete it. 
Uh, let's see, where is the password thing? Here's the password. Uh, you can change it using this form, right? So all kinds of cool stuff. Now this isn't particularly useful to us right now because we don't have any other sort of database stuff. If we wanted to add database stuff later, we could add it to this Django administration uh, area, which makes it easier for us to do database stuff on the back end if we wanted to. Uh, so it's just kind of co a cool thing. We're not really going to use this that much, if at all, in this course, but this is sort of a key Django thing that you will use a lot for things. So I just thought I would, you know, spend a video showing you at least how to set it up and that it exists and stuff. So it's kind of cool. So, all right, we're pretty much ready to go. In the next video, we're going to jump in and actually start building out our real project to get rid of this <laughs> uh, funky little rocket ship screen and start to build out what we want our app to be. And that'll start in the next video.